Hey tribe, welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and I'm from the United Kingdom. I'm a part-time crochet designer and I work full-time in the corporate world. And this channel of ours is all about crochet and yarny goodness. So if you are brand new, hi, hello and welcome to the tribe. It's so good to have you here. And if you're returning, hey, 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 what's up, what's good, what's happening? Today's vlog, I am reviewing 2019. A whole year has gone by, and this will be my last sit-down vlog of the year. And today we're going to talk about the projects that I've planned, worked on, finished, yet to finish and my plans for 2020 because HDDC is going to have an even bigger year. I can already see it. And I'm so excited to have you all here with me to go through it. I am working on a project. This is a blanket that I've designed myself and I will show you all of the blocks when we get to it. I cannot put it down and so I'm going to just crochet the whole way through this when I crochet I'm a bit more of a chatterbox so there we go um, I'm just gonna have to pause every now and then so that I can count my rows okay let's get into this I am wearing look at my beautiful jumper this jumper was a birthday present my birthday is in December it was 12 days ago happy birthday to me um, and I asked my grandmother, the one who taught me to knit and crochet, to make me a traditional Aran jumper. Aran jumpers are the things that I remember my nanny making. Like, that's all I pretty much ever recall her making, other than crochet blankets. Um, but when I bring an image of her to my mind, it's with these big knitting needles jammed under her arm and she's just knitting away, and watching the TV and having a good chat and she doesn't really ever refer to her pattern and then she would chat 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 sort of look at what she's done and carry on and I asked that she would make me a jumper for my 30th um, for a number of reasons one because I am trying to make my own handmade wardrobe and I thought this would be a really really good addition I absolutely love the detailing that she's put in it this is one of this is the first pattern she ever made for my granddad, um, and so it's got a lot of meaning to me for that reason as well. It's got these awesome plaited cables, and then these I think they're called blackberries or popcorn stitch. I'm not quite sure. And then it's got moss stitch down the side, which is one of my favourites. And then it's got these diamonds down here with the it's got like a design in the centre and I absolutely love it. I was given it uh, on Christmas Eve and I have worn it every day since. So I need to get cracking and make another one before I wear this one out. Um, so this is my Aran jumper made for me by my lovely nanny. And I absolutely love it. I've just got it on with some simple jeans and some fluffy socks and it is a very, very traditional jumper, but I think it just, it looks really modern and it looks really classic and expensive um, just by wearing it with more modern accessories. So I would just put on my Converse and then I've got like a big Forks fur coat and I would just wear it with that and I look, I'm slaying. So that's what I'm wearing huge thank you to my nanny I know she doesn't watch this but I still have to say thank you thank you thank you I absolutely love it it is beautiful um, she's gonna give me some soap so that I can wash it myself as well um, because this one cannot be machine washed she's used um, 
this is like 100% scratchy wool um, which my nanny can't wear without something underneath I have a crop top under here so my neck is exposed and from like here down there's nothing underneath and there's nothing on my arms it's a tiny bit prickly here like a tiny little bit but it's not uncomfortable it doesn't bother me and I'm really warm in this it's really really nice so I'm quite glad because my nanny said to me does the wool itch you and I was like no 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 it's fine and I'd never actually worn it so I didn't know but I can now hand on heart say it doesn't itch me like there's a tiny bit of a prickle here and that's it and I just love it and it has inspired me to persevere so that I can learn how to knit Aaron myself and also I've been working on like a crochet not imitation but variation so there's one of my plans for 2020 but anyway we're jumping ahead um so in order to review 2020 I have a huge pile of my projects here next to me so let me do my last stitch on this half square snip it and let's jump in loving the blue I know you haven't seen me use blue like ever the last time I used blue was when I was making a blanket which was a commission from this yarn um, and I'm not a huge blue fan but I, I'm finding that really refreshing and really nice so and if you want to know it's the Stylecraft sky blue or baby blue can't quite remember the colour name but Stylecraft. Stylecraft should sponsor me because all I ever say is Stylecraft, Stylecraft, Stylecraft. Love the stuff. So 2019 I made quite a few projects. Um, not the mountains that I thought maybe I would have but if you take into consideration pretty much everything I made I self-designed that, that right there is the explanation because designing takes up a huge amount of time um, not only in putting together the yarns in planning the project which is my favorite bit but then also in making it in tweaking it if you've watched any of my vlogs which I'm sure you will have you will have seen me show you an item and then say right I'm gonna frog it and I probably spend about 50% of my crochet time frogging what I've already worked on but I am really, really pleased with the stack of projects that I have made and accumulated this year. I've written a list, so let me tell you what they are. I have made, and this is going backwards, my granny square curtain, which is almost finished. I'm not going to give any more explanations, I'm just going to read them out. My granny square curtain. I've started a blanket which is about halfway through and it's not why do, why do I have to caveat this just I've started a blanket my granny square curtain adventure my convertible cow scarf a ear warmer Stella a granny square bag another granny bag which hasn't been named Promise, my granny square jumper dress, jumper dress. Um, Risen, my cropped granny square jumper um, with a backless detail. Then Pinnacle, which is a crocheted jumper. And I also made a pair of crochet socks, which I have actually gifted without taking any pictures of, but I wrote down the, the pattern because I want a pair so badly and they're called the surprise socks and they will be a surprise because you ain't seen them right now um, and then I also knitted a pair of dotty socks um, by Emma of Potter and Bloom and that is everything I've made this year which it doesn't sound a lot does it um, it really doesn't and also I haven't really made anybody else's patterns I've just made my own designed my own so that's quite telling um, 
You ready to see this great big stack of stuff? Let me grab it. Wow. This is everything I have made this year. It's not everything because there's a few things I've given away and there's one more item over there to get to. <sighs> and I love how bright it all is and how heavily the granny squares feature. So I'm gonna put all this down and we're gonna go through it. Ooh, almost knocked the tripod over. Okay, so the first item I picked up is this jumper. This is Pinnacle and it's a jumper that I designed with yarn that I was um, gifted by Hobby, Rito Hobby. Um, and it's this amazing olive colour and then I just detailed it with a black trim. It's a simple boxy crop jumper with belled sleeves. Um, I actually did write up this pattern and I did have it test edited, tech edited and tested but there are some a few kinks to sort out on it and I think I'm actually going to ask a different tech editor to look over it now that I feel a bit more comf com confident and comfortable with the process um, and then do a shout out for the testers um, so that this is one that can come out in 2020 and I want to remake it for myself in a different colour. Um, I love this colour, I do wear this jumper and I just want to put it in another colour, a more neutral colour, maybe something like this, um, so that it goes with more of my wardrobe because this is more of a statement jumper, which I absolutely love. And I might change the neckline ever so slightly. Actually, I wouldn't change the neckline. I think for myself, I might just put a thicker detailing here, like two or three rounds. But that's pinnacle. It's finished. It's got some tweaks to do, and then that can come out to you. Throughout this, I'm going to say I'm going to need testers, so I'm just going to make this announcement now. If anybody, and I've had so many wonderful people in the past comment, if you would like to be a tester, if you email me on my email address, which I'm putting below, um, and then tell me a little bit about yourself or that you'd like to um, test for me, and then if you would just say what your usual bust size is, your bust size just so I can sort of work out a range of um, size testers that I've got. And then what I'm going to do from that list, um, from the emails, I'm going to make a list and then when I have patterns ready to um, test, I can email you all out with the details and you can come back to me and let me know if you can or not. But I want to start building up that like database so that you're all there ready and waiting because I know there's so many of you that will help me out. And 2020 has got a lot of testing ahead. So... That's the first pattern or project of 2019. When I look back over my Instagram, I finished this in the April and I was a bit, I kind of thought to myself, I must have made something before then. But then, as we all know, our day-to-day -day life really does impact and shape our crochet sometimes. And at the start of 2019, I wasn't in the best of places. Um, I was quite unhappy with my living circumstances I was financially really worried and stressed and strained um, and I really, really didn't like the current job that I had um, and so there was quite a lot that I was resisting changing that needed to change and as a result I felt quite down within myself and I didn't really want to make anything. Um, so I was making a few granny squares and I worked on this but I didn't actually finish this until I'd made some quite big changes and process them in my life but that's the way life is it really does impact on us and if you've watched my blanket stack vlog then you will know that every project in there contains memories of what was going on in my life at that time and I think when you're feeling really down or when I'm feeling really down I don't have the creative urges and I don't want to make anything um, and so for the first four months of 2019 I just simply didn't which is a shame but 
life happens like that sometimes and I recognise that that can happen to me. So I finished this one. These were all nicely stacked upstairs and when I looked at them I was like, I'm going to have to refold it all. But it's been really nice to take it all down and go through it all. I'm just going to pick these up in whatever order they come out. Oh, So this number is risen and I was working on this around April because it was going to be my Easter jumper and then we had an unnatural heat wave and it was really really hot on Easter Sunday so I didn't wear it. This, oh my goodness I love it. I made this, I designed this and I love it and look at it with the flowers. Doesn't that look amazing? So this is a cropped jumper, it's using double knit weight yarn and it's got this detailing on this, the sleeves, um, joining the sleeves to the body and then all around the neckline and around the hem and then the back has got this dip cut out which I absolutely love and I had so much fun making this. And I wore this for the first time to Nottingham Yarn Expo um, and I layered it with a denim jacket and then another crochet piece on top which I loved. Um, it's quite a bright coloured number but it is, because it's double knit, it's more of a winter um, item but it, it just brightens up your winter outfit. So this one is finished, it needs writing up and then that one will be another one to be released. Um, I made this, I felt thoroughly rubbish. I had tonsillitis, I was off from work, I dreaded going back to the place that I was working so much so that it was making me ill even thinking about it. Um, I. I wasn't really happy with the way I was living and it was just all in that period of time and so I just put everything into this um, and this is the first vlog that I started to do showing you my process of putting it together and frogging and I really enjoyed making this. I am envisaging this in another neutral colour palette I'm also thinking about doing it in cotton weight yarn so that it's more of a summer type top or a transitional like spring to summer. I'm quite liking that thought so there's plenty to play with there. I called this Risen because it um, was going to be my Easter Sunday jumper and also I just felt like so much had accumulated in my life and that I had sort of risen up above it and it was just time to sort it all out and then I called um, Pinnacle Pinnacle because I felt like it encapsulated everything that I wanted to reach within my career. Um, like I've got huge amount of goals and like long term plans, like my five year plan, ten year plan sort of in my head of what I'd like to reach, what my goals are and for me I want to have like my own um, clothing line, I'd like to have my own line of patterns and Pinnacle really is the start of that. Every single design I make it has this one word name which has so much meaning packed into it but I'm just a vocabulary magpie and I love my words, I'm an avid reader um, and I think it's really important to name something because whatever emphasis you give to it, it will have. So that's Risen, I love it so much. The colours are so vibrant. Okay, then we have got, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this bag. This is a granny square bag, which I have made with handles. I basically made a giant granny square and then put some extra bits on the end and attached my glitter handles. This bag hasn't been named, I haven't written out the pattern and I was going to line it then when it came to lining it I realised maybe I should have lined it before I attached the handles. 
so that was it I just put it on and I didn't do any more on it um, I have used it once or twice and it is pretty cool as a bag like you can shove a lot of yarn in it and it's fine but not smaller items because they will fall through and also I think just lining it will give it a bit more stability because it will stretch otherwise um, so that doesn't have a name I need name suggestions um, again I like them to be just like one word and really quite meaningful and it's just gone on, it's gone on nameless but I do really really like it and I would like to make more variations and have a go at releasing some of these patterns is it something you can see yourself using I this is just sort of epitomizes my contradictory nature I just and I'm just so contrary and not even to be difficult it's just the way I am I love the bright colours and everything I make for the first time is in all of the bright colours but in order for this to work in my wardrobe it needs to be in neutrals like this um, so I'm going to remake it but in a neutral colour palette so it just seems to be that everything I make is bright and then I remake it in neutral to test it for myself to write the pattern out and so that I can use it so eventually I'm going to have a huge huge mound of things like this that I don't actually use but that I love because I made them so maybe I'll have to do a sample sale I don't know so if you've got any ideas or even if you don't have any ideas but there's just words that you really like or that you've learned recently just put them in the comments below as many words as many comments as you want just because I like to learn the words and you never know one of your suggestions might just be the winning ticket so that is this amazing bag. I love that pop of neon, but that pop of neon means I'm not gonna use it. I know somebody who would use it. So maybe I'll get in touch with them and send it. Oh. So that is my nameless bag. Then, from then, I think this one came first. This is Stella, and this is my granny square bag. And I made it with a press stud and I lined it as well. Black is an awful colour to be able to photograph and show up. Um, I got a really good reaction from this. The fringing on this one I'm not keen on. And so I did start making another one, which is here. And all that needs is it's lining, it's press stud and it's version of fringing I was going to do along the bottom there and then that pattern can be written out and released can you see what the sticking point for me is here it is and I've worked this out it is writing up the patterns and getting them just sent out I don't know why but that's just where I just sort of move on to something else I do know why it's because I'm a planner I love to plan them and once it gets to this stage I kind of done it so I'm not interested, but I want to start getting these projects out there and get them into your wardrobes as well. So this one, I think the other stumbling block for this one for me is I was going to record how to line it as well. And that felt like a huge task. And so I just buried my head like an ostrich and didn't do it. Um, but I have this amazing pale pink like satin to line this with and a press stud um, and that would just look really nice on a night out with like it's quite neutral but it's got a bit of colour in there I've got a pair of heels this would go really nice with and then just a simple dress and yes I could do my thing with that definitely and I've also got loads of other bag ideas in my mind I wanted to um, explore different types of yarn I wanted something a bit more sturdier um, more of like a nylon-y rope type material and um, just to make it sturdier and then I've got loads of different like shapes in my mind um, so that's definitely something to play around with in 2020 without a doubt so that's Stella version one and two to be completed and put out there 
To be honest, I don't think I would get this one tested or tech edited because it's really simple and it's going to come in one size. Um, I would just ask somebody to proofread the pattern. Um, and then yeah, that one's good to go. I don't know what it is about recording the tutorial but I'm just like, Ooh. isn't it funny some of the things that trip us up? There's something to work on. But that's Stella. Um, and you've also all provided loads of star names when I made this and I did look at star names for the other bag pattern but nothing really stuck. So, Stella. I've got like a pile of granny squares growing, it's beautiful. The next project is this. And this is my granny square jumper dress. It's got these sleeves, I've rolled up the sleeves at the moment, um, it is kind of hard to see but I have done um, three round granny squares and then joined it all in this glitter black um, and I've actually worn this out. The reason this isn't finished is because it needs some tweaking. I'm going to take it apart, I'm going to take off an entire row down here and at the bottom and then take off an entire one or two rows off the end of the sleeves just so that it actually finishes at my wrist um, and so that it's just a bit more fitted and then you've got it, write it up and send it out to be tested. Um, I made this in June and it's got it's not even a story, but it's got a huge chunk of my life in this. Um, so when I made this project, I needed something mindless to work on that would keep me occupied. Um, and I, I know I don't really need more blankets, though I'm just going to say, it doesn't matter if I need them, I'm still going to make more. But I decided to put these into something wearable and I've wanted to make a jumper dress for the longest time and I had this chunk of time all of a sudden to, to put it together and so I just did and as a little side note feeding into this isn't it funny that we think that projects will take us the longest time like my granny square curtain but when you actually start on it it's really really simple and quite quick um, so I didn't actually say anything on my social media when it happened um, because it was a family event we well my parents made the decision the family made the decision that we weren't going to post about the event anywhere um, because there was already so much to deal with and although people are well-meaning and, and well wishes um, it just added an extra an extra thing to sort of cope with during this really really difficult time so I never said on my channel why I was working on this. I just said I had a lot of time on my hands that I needed to fill. And the reason I had so much time on my hands is because my brother was involved in a life-changing accident. And we all went to the hospital to see him. And the doctors took us into a side room and said that he wouldn't survive. Um, and I promised myself I would not get upset so I'm not crying because he's fine now and we've just had the most amazing Christmas together and he's had a miraculous recovery and it's just amazing or inspiring to see how well he's doing. But at that time when they told us that, they said that statistically it's a fatal accident and he's not going to wake up my brother's like three years younger than me and he's a dad and so in my head I was like he has to wake up because he needs to be here um, and so there was the doctor said to us he's young and he's got that on his side so we're going to give him a chance and we're going to leave him in a coma for a while and see if he regains any brain activity so that suddenly meant that me and my family were in a hospital, an amazing hospital with amazing staff and so much support but it meant like 10 hour days for the first two to three weeks just being there as they left him in a coma and we got the updates and 
as they tried to bring him out of the coma, which didn't go smoothly. And that whole time, I just needed something to work on. I needed something to keep me occupied so that I could keep myself strong. And so I worked on these granny squares and I had a stack of granny squares from a blanket that I'd taken apart. So I undid each granny square and redid them in a smaller hook size, sewed in all the ends and did them join as you go. And I didn't really think long term because we wasn't sure how long we'd be in the hospital, but in my head I just I needed something to work on. And as it actually happened that by the time he left that hospital to move to the the recovery hospital he now resides in, um, I had this whole thing put together within, I think it was even quicker than that, I think within like five weeks definitely this was all done and put together um, and that's when I was just, it was one of those like moments where you just think the time's going to pass but look how much I've achieved in that time. Um, it was also really good because because I made this project I wanted to share it all with you so I I hadn't I had been neglecting my channel because I hadn't really felt myself I didn't have a crochet mojo a crojo um, and I didn't have anything to make I hadn't made anything I didn't have anything to show you so I think in the first six months prior to June in 2019 I'd posted like four or five videos if that and then I made like the promise to myself that I was going to pick my channel back up and really stand with it and watch it grow and flourish. I made that promise the week before my brother's accident and so a video went out and I had one scheduled so one went out the following week and then at that point it was a really pivotal moment and you always read about life-changing incidents um, and the impact that it has but at that moment I thought to myself I can just say I don't have the time and not do my channel or I can realise that life happens, it's going to keep happening and I'm blessed that I have a life and that it's still happening for me and so I can use that to focus on what I really want to focus on and so that's why I kept showing up and I have kept showing up for HDDC because HDDC really got me through such a difficult time if it wasn't for crochet, if it wasn't for my boyfriend, my family and my church, I don't know how I would have gotten through that time. Um, and at the time my boyfriend sent a podcast for me to listen to on YouTube and it was the interview of T.D. Jakes um, with Elevation Church and it was about his book Crushing, God's Power Crushing. Um, and one of the one of the lines in there that really resonated with me was about um, going through the process to get to your promise and I felt like all that time in the hospital we had to go through the process of being by my brother's bedside being told he's not going to wake up being told that he's going to be severely disabled um, going through all of that process to then get to the promise and then here he is at Christmas and we had a really wonderful Christmas making so many moments and enjoying so many memories and we are just so blessed and I am so grateful that he wasn't taken from us in that moment because my Christmas right now could have been so so different and I am not going to cry nope I'm so glad I still have my brother. And even now he's okay with what that doctor had to tell us. Whew. No crying. Be grateful. Joyful and grateful. So I named, 
I named this jumper Promise. And I made a promise to myself at that time that I would stick with HDDC and the very things that bring me alive and that I'm so passionate about. I also, at that time, went and got my first tattoo of the year. I got my brother's race number tattooed on my wrist. Um, and for me, it was just a huge and very powerful reminder that life is for now, is right now, happening right now. Life is for living and just to not put things off, to not think it's not the perfect time or I'll do it later, but to do it right now and to enjoy the process, to enjoy the messy feeling, to in find joy in all of it because that is life. And it's not until the threat of that being taken away or your life being altered beyond recognition it's not until that point that your perception sort of snaps in and you realise what is important. And for me, HDDC is so, so important. I love to make and it is a huge part of my identity. It's integral to everything that I am. And so I sat there in that waiting room and by my brother's bedside with piles and piles of granny squares and there were so many people within the waiting room that spoke to me about it and said they found it soothing to watch and it helped me make connections with people within the waiting room because we're all there because something terrible has happened to somebody that we love so dearly and not everybody got to go home, not everybody left that hospital, not everybody walked away living, not everyone can walk and don't cry the nurses in that critical care were amazing my brother had one on one 24 hour care and he was in that ward in that unit for three weeks and I can't fault the nurses they were amazing and one of the nurses said to me that he didn't think that my brother would pull through. Um, he told me this after that he'd started to pull through. He said, I didn't think your brother would pull through because of the extent of the brain trauma that he'd received. Um, and that they do this job day in, day out. And for us, it's like a huge shock it's like someone just got you and shook you and puts you in the middle of this ward and there's so many people from like road traffic accidents and God knows what that's caused brain injuries or that's put them in um, critical care and they're on um, like life support machines like breathing, dialysis, keeping the heart beating, everything and they see it all the time and he this particular nurse said to me, I did not think your brother would pull through. He said, but then you're... Don't cry. Don't cry. But then your family pulled together around him and the prayers that he received and just the love and the amount of time we spent with him just talking to him and he says he remembers being in his coma, he remembers songs that we played to him. He remembers waking up, not being able to move, being in the dark, because he, he did lose his eyesight at first. And it's now come back, thank, thank the Lord. And we were there throughout that, and the nurse said it's because of how we pulled together as a family that's really helped pull him through. And just that my brother had had a miracle performed on him because he should have died and he's still here. So that's the really emotional, powerful story behind this promise. And as part of my promise to myself, this is another project that I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna write up and I'm gonna get tested and it's gonna be printed, it's gonna be published. And true to form, I'm gonna make myself another version in neutral colors. <laughs> Oh dear. So that's promise. Um, 
the last six months of 2019 have taught me so much and they have been the hardest six months ever but also the most beautiful like my true friends have really stood up beside me and held me up so many times my boyfriend has been amazing he would sit and just hold me for hours while I cried and he would just tell me repeatedly it's going to be okay and I'm here and he was my strength so that I could then be strong for my family and because my brother's in the army and it was an army incident that he was involved in the army provided a um, support kind of like a support worker from the army and she's part of the army world um, and so she understands like the army hierarchy and setup and she really helped us during those initial few weeks and she actually came to my birthday party which my brother was at and she was tearful, I was tearful, I think we were all tearful but with tears of like gratitude and joy because when she last saw him he was so very very ill um, and to where he is now it's just amazing and I honestly just wake up every day with just gratitude for the fact that I'm still here and that my family are here and that we're safe and we're happy and we're healthy and every day I make sure I put the time and the hours in to HDDC to really build it up to what I want it to be, what I know it can be because I want HDDC to be my full time occupation, I want to do crochet and crochet things every day and I want that to be my sustenance, I want that to be what pays my bills, um, I want to have a line of patterns, I want to be featured in magazines, 2019 is the first time I've been featured in a magazine and it was amazing and now I want to get a pattern published in one, I want to self publish my own books and I have so many patterns in mind like just waiting to be worked on. I've got so many blanket designs and so many make alongs and cows and crochet alongs and all them all the alongs to make with you. I've got plans for planners and journals and stickers and pins and postcards and so so much. And so every day I just focus on the dailies. I focus on my tick list of things I can do that day so that eventually I'll get to those bigger goals, so eventually I will have my yarn shops, so eventually I will have just all of these amazing things that I know that are in store for HDDC and if I ever feel a bit overwhelmed I just look at my tattoo of my brother's race number and just pause for a moment and just know that life is for living now and to do the scary things because you might not have your life tomorrow to do the scary things so just do it um yeah that's quite deep and philosophical and maybe not what you want to hear but that's what I'm here for so that's promise and I didn't cry that's promise. One of my other projects that I've worked on is this cowl. It's called Adventure and I made it whilst I was on holiday and it is a convertible scarf made of granny squares and I have put these buttons on them so that it unbuttons and you can wear it as a scarf or you can wear it as a cowl. In all honesty I have never unbuttoned this to wear it always wear it as a cow. So I'm not even sure I'd put the buttons in it again if I was to make it again. But what I do is I wrap it around like this and it's beautifully warm and these are the main colours in my winter wardrobe. So it goes with absolutely everything that I wear and it's also the first pattern I've published myself. Um, and this pattern is available on Ravelry and I just wanted to be able to say a huge thank you to the tribe for everything that you do and so I am going to make this a free download 
until um, the 1st of February 2020. So if you put in the code THANK YOU 2019, then you'll be able to download your copy of this for free and then hopefully you'll use the hashtag so that I can find you and the rest of the tribe can find you and see what you're working on. So that's thank you 2019 and this is adventure. I am tempted to make another one and I might even make it into a cow because I could do a YouTube live um, and then we could all post on Instagram our progress. So if you're feeling a cow for this pattern, let me know and then I will join in and make another one. I just glanced at all my granny squares and thought, I might make a really bright one, I might make a neutral one. Oh, decisions. The other granny project of the year is the granny square curtain. I decided during one of my um, chat with me vlogs that I wanted to make a two round granny square project and I decided it was going to become a blanket no curtain I do want to make a blanket though um, so here it is this is the body of the curtain I've sewn in all of the ends but one which I pulled earlier because I realised I hadn't pulled it tight so that needs sewing in and I've done all of the squares for the tab tops and I have done, I've sewn in all of the ends. So I'm going to make five tab tops out of granny squares, um, seam them and then put them, put it together and then that's going to be tonight's task. So that hopefully, today's the 28th of December, for the 1st of January 2020 I will have a curtain up in my hallway. I started this in September and it really didn't take me that long at all. I made it into a process, I systemised the entire production. So I picked out the colours for the centres and I made mounds and mounds of them, I worked out how many I would need, um, made loads of them up and then I would add two rows on, sew in the ends and add on another two rows. I did that until I got to the last six rows. I put the last six rows on and I sewed them all in. Um, and then the same with the tabs. I've made the centres, I've made up the squares, I've sewn the ends in and now I just need to join them all together. And it was actually really simple to make. I had the body, like the bulk of the body done within four weeks. Where I kind of derailed myself is that when I went away in October I didn't take this with me. And so I took new projects and then those new projects really grabbed a hold of me. And so this was put to one side. And it might have not been finished if it wasn't for the fact that we're in the middle of winter and I don't have a curtain up at my hallway window because when I decorated it doesn't match, it took it down. And that means that when I walk to my bathroom the whole of the street can see me. Um, and so I really need a curtain up there for some privacy um, because I can't keep dashing to the loo hoping that no one sees me or turn the lights off so I can walk around in the dark because there's a great big street light out there. So the need has kept me going which is good because I want to see this finished um, and it's so close. I'm absolutely loving the way it looks. Um, I want to make another one because I want to make a matching door curtain for my front door. Um, so this will be upstairs on the landing and then downstairs will be a really huge one for my front door. There's a couple of things that are holding me back from that. Like the sheer amount of work doesn't really bother me. I don't think it will take me all that long. But this isn't going to be my forever home. I'm not going to be here much past like 18 months, hopefully. And so then I'm like, do I want to put all that work in for something that may never be used again? But then I kind of just countered that with thinking, um, if I don't hang it up in my new house, then I'll just take the tab tops off and it'll be a huge randomly shaped blanket. I'm sure it'll get some use. Um, or I could just undo it because it's continuous drawing as you go. Once I've found the end and undo it, it will all unravel and then I could move them about and make it into more of a quilt shaped 
I don't know. Like, am I overthinking it? Probably, because I overthink everything. Um, but let's get this one finished, and then I need to also get hold of some more of the yarn if I'm going to make a door curtain. I need to weigh this and work out how much I use to join it all, and then work out how much I will need for the door curtain. But I think I use something like 12... I think I use like a thousand grams. I could have made that up though. Like a kilo of yarn to join this. And so I imagine for the door I'm going to need like two and a half because I want to do from that wall to that wall the whole way across. Um, and maybe a, a draft excluder to go with it. Why not? So I'm going to need quite a lot of yarn. Then the only other project I've worked on, as I said, was a pair of socks for my friend, which I already gifted. I didn't take any videos or footage, but I love them. I'm going to make my own. They're called the Surprise Socks. And when you see them, I hope you're happily surprised, pleasantly surprised. Um, I knitted a pair of dotty socks by Emma of Potter and Bloom. Um, and I nailed the heel. Like That's one of my memorable moments of 2019. I nailed the heel on a pair of socks and now I feel comfortable knitting socks. So comfortable that I've started designing my own knitted sock patterns. Um, another memorable moment of 2019 is I got my hook set. This is my amazing tulip hook set. It's got a set of hooks in it in this pink colour. I went to London May time, April, May, like I sort of got myself out of my funk and one of the things I wanted to do was to go to London and I met my friend there and we had a lovely day and I did do a vlog of my haul and it's got this hook set in it, here's the matching missing one um, and it's by Tulip and I spent an age umming and ahhing over the colour and I just I don't know why but I'm really drawn to pink and it annoys me because it's so girly. There was another set there but I just knew I wanted the pink and despite the price I got it and I'm so glad I did. It's got this hard case, um, it's got a set of hooks from 2mm up to 6mm and then it's got um, a pair of snips and some darning needles and I also put in a pink measuring tape that I had. And then on the zip I add a stitch marker so that when I'm working it's there. And then my trusty blue biros that I use all live in here. And that goes everywhere with me. And it has everything I need no matter where I am. Then I can snip, I can crochet and I can sew in ends. It's so handy. It's such a good investment. I'm so pleased that I brought it. And since I've brought it I haven't used any of my other hooks at all. Um, and what I'm going to do is I want some hooks slightly bigger and slightly smaller so I'm going to get them in the same style um, just so at least they all look the same so that's an amazing another amazing memorable moment of 2019 I finally got the hook set that I've wanted for the longest time um, other memorable moments and I wrote a list it's featured in crochet now, issue 50. Oh, I just feel like I've made it now. Like it's just really boosted me. 2020 is going to be a strong year for HDDC and the tribe. Um, I went on a knitting machine course, which I loved, and I've got my own knitting machine. So that's something in 2020 I'm going to be playing around with a lot more. Um, I also got a thousand subscribers. We reached a thousand subscribers on HDDC. And it's not about the numbers, but to know I have that level of support and that you keep showing up to see my crochet is crazy cool. And I can't thank you all enough. Um, I did feel like a little bit at the start of the year when I was feeling quite down, I lost myself quite a bit. Um, and I didn't really want to bring so much crochet content to the channel because I wasn't really seeing it anywhere else. And so in my head, I equated that with being unpopular. Um, and then I've kind of sat back and been like I don't get me wrong I love knitting and what it produces but crochet is my jam um, and so I want to bring more and more crochet here and my most viewed videos are my granny squares and my crochet 
Um, and so isn't that all of the encouragement that I need that that's what you guys want to see? So 2020 is going to be even more Granny Square magic. Granny Square mania. Um, I also went to Nottingham Yarn Expo, another memorable moment of 2019. And I took my grandmother and we had a really, really good time. I was really surprised at how much we both enjoyed it. And I've got some amazing yarn for my stash, which I can't wait to put to good use. Um, I'm thinking socks, crochet socks, or maybe like a top. Oh, I've got so many design ideas and so many amazing options. Um, and then I perfected the heel on my knitted socks. Like I feel like I'm that's it done that I can accomplish anything and then I've also put that um I got my hook set and then the two sort of the other events within 2019 my beautiful beautiful dog Darcy he was put to sleep and he went over the rainbow bridge in April um I had him for 11 years and he went on his 11th birthday so I was a bit tearful on this birthday because it's the first birthday in like 11 years since I was 18 that he's not been here and I've not had him at Christmas. Um, but I know at some point in the future when the time's right I will get another Whippet puppy. Um, so although I feel sad that he's gone, I just feel really really blessed that I had such an amazing dog that loved me so so much and all of the great memories we had and that I've got so many videos of him. Um, and I got, I've got his ashes as well, so he's here and his spirit's always running around. Um, and then I got a new job which I am much, much happier at and a lot more settled within. Um, I earn more money now which gives me a little bit more flexibility. Um, I can pay my bills, um, I can keep my yarn warm, I can keep myself fed, so that's amazing. Um, and because I don't feel as stressed and drained by it. I've got more time to put into HGDC, which is great because, as I said, this time next year, it's my goal that I'll be able to go full time with HGDC. Um, so, yeah, help me make that happen. If you can be a tester, email me. If you can sign up to Patreon, then go ahead there. I've revamped the entire site and it looks really, really cool. Um, so go check that out, even just to admire the way it looks and let me know that you've seen it. Um, and the only other thing I haven't talked about is my one little word. So every year I pick one word and I use that as sort of a mantra um, and guidance throughout the year. I don't set New Year's resolutions. Um, I pick my one word and I apply it to all areas of my life. So this year I went with simplify and with that word I applied it to my entire world and for my crochet that meant that I went through my stash and anything that I didn't really feel like I was drawn to I gifted it on to new homes and I've resourced out my crochet space and I'm going to do a vlog and show you that because it's so so beautiful up there um, and then I just really simplified my day to day life which has helped my crochet because now I've got more time and more space to actually crochet um, and I will be, I have already picked my word for 2020 but because I've been here for so long talking already I'm going to do my one word as a separate vlog um, I've also read a lot this year not as much as previous years but I did beat last year so I've, I've come in at about 26 books um, which isn't bad going. Next year I'm aiming to do 52, one book a week. Um, but I will tell you more about that as well in my January 2020 vlog because it involves my one word and my spending plans. So any of you that are bookworms just like me, I'm gonna be doing a bookshelf tour and discussing some of the books that I've got to read for 2020. So that's my 2019 in review. I hope you've had 
a really, really good Christmas. I hope you have a happy new year and that you've got many, many blessings on its way to you to add to the ones you already have. And I just want to say a big, big thank you with every part of my being for turning up, for subscribing, for showing up for HDDC. For all of you that have subscribed, clicked like, left amazing comments, for everyone that's reached out to me, um, for all of my Patreons, my wonderful tribe stars, I cannot thank you all enough for being here and for helping me, HG, behind HGDC, to grow and evolve so that HGDC can grow and evolve. And I just, just thank you. The biggest, biggest heartfelt thank you um, and I can't wait to see what 2020 brings to us so I hope you have a lovely new year however you, however you celebrate it and bring it in and I'll see you in the new year for more vlogs until then happy making moments and memories <laughs>